What's up guys, I'm Shane and welcome to a brand new series of Animal Crossing New Horizons. I f told you guys in the last island tour I did of Blackrock that I was done with that island. I had all my villagers, it's all set. The dream code that I had on there, you get to see my final roster, everything like that because I had all the cards of people I wanted. Uh, I didn't want to terraform it, I didn't want to tear it down, anything like that. It's done. So I transferred the data and I started fresh. And I hated how that was going because uh, I bought a bunch of turnips. And then Black Rock was still time traveled forward and it happened to be a Sunday, or not a Sunday. It was Sunday in real life, it was a different day in Black Rock. And I found a turnip price of 514 and then it broke the money system of the game because I had 10 million bells five days into my island. So I'm starting it again, but I'm going to record it this time. But we're doing it in a new format. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of voiceovers. I'm working off a script for the most part. And this way I can record stuff during the day when I don't usually have a time to record. I can play the game normally and then put these videos out whenever they're ready. You may be a couple days behind sometimes, depending on how all of it goes. Um, so you'll see the date on the bottom. I'm not going to time travel whatsoever. I'm not really going to take any advantage of my other island this time. Maybe a couple spare DIYs here and there, maybe some extra fossils or something, but I'm not going to go crazy or anything like that. Now, I'm doing this as a Southern Hemisphere island, just in case I do want to go to my old island and go fishing or whatnot and get the previous one, but I live in Massachusetts, but I'm moving to Florida, like hopefully very soon. I'm moving away because I hate the cold in the winter. So, I guess to avoid it in a video game, I'm moving to South Africa. Now, the other thing, the reason I'm not time traveling, it ruined the game for me. And I'm not doing this series to do villager streams. Like, that's not the objective this time around. I just want to play the game and have fun with it. So, we're going to try and make this a self-sufficient island, no time traveling. And if there are villager hunts and I do occasional streams, it'll just be when it would naturally happen. All right, with all that rambling out of the way, now we... Talk to Timmy and Tommy, we're going to pick the layout, my name, everything like that. Now, what I wanted to do this time was I picked the layout that had resident services pretty far off from the airport. This way, I wanted to experiment and do, like, a big entrance area. I know with the dream codes, it kind of ruins it. It doesn't matter, but I still wanted to do it just in case. And after the cutscene and everything flying over, we see that the fruits are cherries on this island, which is literally my least favorite fruit, not just in the game, but in real life, so... I guess I'll be cutting all those trees down afterwards. And now that we're here, we get to meet our first two villagers. And first off, we have Agnes as our sisterly type, who was the first villager on Black Rock as well. But our jock is Sheldon, who is a squirrel jock. But he's got the same name as that character from Big Bang Theory, who I don't consider to be a jock. So it's throwing me off right off the bat. All right, now as far as the initial placement of the houses, I wanted to avoid just tearing down any sort of trees. I still want to be able to get them for resources, at least in the early goings of the game. I know eventually I'm going to be tearing pretty much all these trees down anyway, so I just set up my house right here in front of this little pond that happened to be right there because I'm not going to have terraforming for a little, probably a week and a half doing it the natural way, so at least I'll have a nice view in the meantime. Now, as far as where I set up Agnes and Sheldon, just sort of off to the side here. Again, trying not to do too much tearing down trees, but giving them enough space so I can do, like, a front yard and decorate and stuff like that. Because I am going to be trying to decorate and do little things here and there on my way to getting three stars and terraforming and stuff like that. I don't want to just dump stuff all over the island. I want a respectable-looking island as I go. And then once I get terraforming, then I tear it all down. So getting through all that, I, once again, don't want to talk to anyone at the party. And I go and sleep. Uh, start the game off at about 2.30 in the afternoon. Tom Nook told me I owed him 49,800 bells, but we settled on 5,000 Nook Miles instead. Now, my daily routine is going to be every day pretty much shaking all of the trees, because there's five wasp drops, there's two furniture drops in the trees, I don't care about the 1,200 bells or whatever it is, but the wasps, they all sell for 2,500 bells. And early game, that's great. Especially considering I'm about to owe Tom Nook about 5.7 million bells over the next week or two. So I'd rather get a head start. I did find two of the wasps on the mainland, and my one furniture drop was a simple kettle. 
Now, when you're knocking out stuff like this, I went through, posted to the board, I just put hello world, because I am a programmer, technically, according to my degree. Not that I do anything with it. For my custom design, I made the most bootleg Josh Allen jersey you'll ever see, and hopefully I didn't just jinx my team by putting him on the series. With the odds and ends done, I started focusing on catching as many critters as possible, and mostly I just started by hunting bugs. The upside of starting in what would be July up here is that the saw stag sells for 2,000 bells and the Miyama stag sells for 1,000. Much better than the damselflies and kite butterflies you'd be stuck with in January. Once I had my five critters, I turned them over to Tom, who then gave me my museum kit. And after running around like an idiot for probably about 20 minutes trying to find a spot, I just popped it right next to residential services. Hey, now Blathers has someone to talk to. He doesn't go over and bug Tom. After that, I just started working on grabbing as many critters for Blathers as possible. But I did see one of my fossils across the river. Then coming down the right side, I saw two literally right next to each other. At least I know where they are for tomorrow. After catching a pale chub, that brought me to 15 critters piled up for tomorrow. And by changing my title on my passport to Aspiring Egg, I got my 5,000 miles to pay off my loan. Now, I have Nook Miles Plus, so I can start working on smaller achievements, but on top of that, I have the wetsuit. This way, I can swim over to that right area, and there's a small area up to the top as well. But once I went over to the right side, I could confirm that my native flower is a mum. Not that it matters, and I could kind of see it from before, but I like getting the better close-up view. On top of that, I have red roses and lilies available in the shop, so I can plant both of those, and in a few days I can work on breeding for black variants on both of those. I can't do anything with the red mums, but I'm about to have a ton of them coming off my cliff sides. Now, again, I have access to my old island, and I could just go back and grab some hybrids from there and save myself the time, but I actually really, like, really enjoyed flower breeding when I was doing it the first time through. Because it was, it was exciting, you woke up each day, did I get this new hybrid? Because, uh, no, you know, I didn't have a friend who was doing it, my friend only focused on breeding roses, so all the other variants, that's what I did. And it is exciting, especially once you figured out, like, how cloning and all that stuff works. So, I'm gonna do it naturally, but if anything gives me trouble, or if I don't have space to do the giant rose breeding area, then I'll go grab some stuff from the old island. Now, on top of that, during my daily gathering, my first rock was extra lucky, and out of the seven drops, six were iron nuggets. Overall, I ended up with nine at the end of the day. I used a couple, I made a DIY workbench, and made a couple of the good tools, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be doing a bunch of islands in tomorrow's episode, and I'm sure I will have iron, like, just filling my pockets. After I finish going through, trying to get all the wood, all the weeds, all the fruits, everything I could, cleaned it all up, went into the tent, and sold all the extra stuff and critters that I had gathered. But on my way out, I saw a scorpion running around, and caught it no problem. Getting that done, night one, before Blathers is even there, it's just nice to get that out of the way, because that's one of the only spawns that's really going to give you trouble, because it's kind of random. Uh, I also found Wisp as I was swimming around, because I wanted to focus on getting some diving done. Uh, but instead, I got distracted by him. Uh, didn't know he could spawn on night one. Uh, but finding his orbs is very time-consuming when you only have access to half of the island. So, I tried, and as I was looking for around, I found another scorpion. But uh, apparently I was too close, because when I pulled out my net, even just hit the button to do it, he aggroed. Uh, he took me down before I even had the animation done of pulling out the net, so unlucky for me. But after a while, I did find all the pieces of Wisp, and he gave me an elephant slide, which is perfect because I want to build a playground as one of my first little areas. This way I can order the playground gym, you know, as I'm sure I fish up a bunch of tires, make some tire toys and stuff like that. It's just, you know, a nice early game area. Again, because I don't want to cheese it. At the end of my first night, between all the extra critters, the diving and stuff like that, not that I got incredibly lucky, but just by catching a bunch of stuff, I ended up with 81,000 bells in my bank account. And considering all the islands we're going to go to tomorrow, just one sister fruit island, and I will easily, easily have enough money to pay for that first loan. 
and who knows what other kind of luck we might have. But for episode one, and this might be a little bit short, this is where I'm going to leave it off. Now, in the future, I might start combining days into episodes. There will probably be episodes focused on doing a specific thing. And if I start integrating more live commentary, that'll probably also pump up the runtime. But I figured just for this, for the first episode, I'd just do something simple like this. Now, again, tomorrow, we're going to build our shop. And we're going to go on mystery tours and try and pick out our first three villagers. I don't want to go crazy and pick anyone who I really, really like. Because they are going to be stuck with that cruddy furniture. But I also don't want to get a repeat of somebody. Again, I am collecting the villager photos. And even though that has slowed a lot, and without time traveling, it's going to slow really, really much more. I don't want to get a bunch of villagers who I already had before. And it's also going to be weird passing up Blue Bear and Cranston and anyone else. Because we are going after a Peppy, a Lazy, and a normal villager. Uh, but... Again, I got my dream code, and right now I have access to my island, so I can just go visit them whenever. So, that'll be okay with that. But, this is where I'm going to wrap up the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit like down below. If you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell to get it delivered directly to your inbox every single time I upload. Any thoughts, suggestions, whatever you may have, leave all that down in the comment section below. Everything you leave down there, I will always respond to, unless you are the trolliest of trolls. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Shane. I'm out.